Jag såg på träna och på blomstran runt mig och tänkte det er livet er i allt som det är er i mig. Och jag tror för de flesta urbefolkningar och og också för samer så är er allt liv helle. Och skulle ta patent på liv och skulle ta patent på oss som människor. Den tanken är er ju rätt och slett vanviktig. Para nosotros eh uh, uh, esto significa en primer lugar de que eh, es una perpetuación de un sistema colonial de relaciones. En, de, en primer lugar, donde en primer lugar uh, solamente existe una manera de ver el mundo, la manera de los cientistas, la manera de la cultura occidental. Ett ägg befruktas av en sedcelle. Livet börjar och arvematerialet överförs till ett nytt individ. Det levande livets koder och gensekvenser är er det nå möjligt att ta patent på. Det betyder att någon har egendomsrätten till mikroorganismer, planter, djur och människors arvematerial. We have uh, somewhere between 60 to 70,000 different genes uh, identified and we filed uh, patents on partial sequence information at least on almost all of those. Uh, in addition, we have approximately another 70 genes that we've now uh, completed the entire sequence for the entire gene that we filed patents on. But with new biotechnologies, ultimately, we'll be patenting every other life form. And it went from the microorganisms to the plants, from the plants to the animals. Now it's gone from the animals to the people. That was inevitable. 14. mars 1995 fick USA:s hälsodepartement egendomsrätten till genmaterial från en 40 år gammal man från Hagahai-folket en liten urbefolkningsgruppe på Papua Ny Guinea. It's undoubtedly the first time in history where the government of one country has taken out a patent on a human being in another country. You can develop vaccines perhaps from that cell line or from that genetic material which again could be commercialized and, and marketed around the world. Uh, people are a profitable business. Genteknologin har gjort delar av bioindustrin till världens raskast växande förretningsområde och många hoppar på stora förtjänster. What what that particular part of the industry is going to represent will be in the, you know, billions or even tens of billions. I think it's going to be big business. Nya kornsorter eller nya mediciner kan man nå lage vid och isolera virksamma gener från arvematerialet hos planter, djur och människor. Over 70 procent av disse genresurserna finns i de fattiga länderna och hos urbefolkningarna. I Pastasa provinsen i Ecuador, där regnskogen i Amazonas möter Andesfjällen, finns nästan 10 procent av alla plantarter på jordkloden. Det har gjort området svårt attraktivt för läkemedelsfirmaer på letning efter plantematerial som kan utvecklas till nya mediciner. Urbefolkningar i regnskogen har genom århundrader skaffat sig kunskaper om planter som kan helbreda eller förebygga sjukdomar. Rona ni shorona wa 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 mikare lolo asha wasiri me joan hambeisha rasnalon ali parihu kausango kai monde. Silo ya ya silo mama ali ta nyukata ekiwacho ya kiwacho Kiraigo nyuka yari rani, ama jeruna wanyungawa, sumo pari huka usangawa nisha. Na nisha me doktor tukushikani, mbroho. Urbefolkningenes kunskaper om medisinplanter og det rike biologiske mangfold i regnskogen vil i fremtiden få stadig større betydning for produktion av legemidler til mennesker i den rike del av verden. Some estimates suggest that there could be as high as 40 percent of all the drugs we use in the future will be directly from medicinal plants and, and indigenous knowledge. Många av urbefolkningsgrupperna i Amazonas är er nu i färd med att utryddas. Deras livsform är er truet av internationella selskaper och lokala inträngare som hugger ned regnskogen och insnevrar deras territorier och jaktmarker. 
Och Aurani folk är er bland de sista som fortsatt klarar att upprätthålla sin traditionella livsstil. Men Aurani-ne har hela tiden måttet kämpa för att bevara sin kultur och sitt levesätt. Ha venido con el misionero. Ha venido a civilizar los Aurani y destruir comunidades y violar los humanidad. Y también ha traído compañía petroleros y poco de compañía madera y miles de cosas. Y, y último se organizé hace 10 años, como todos los comunidades de Guaurani, yo preguntaba cómo era el problema. Entonces, ellos, primeramente, contaminación, todo lo que venía de enfermedad, lo que no conocía Guaurani. Ha muerto mucho Guaurani hace 30 años. Pressen fra storindustrien har de siste årene ført til omfattende opprør blant urbefolkningene i Ecuador. Ledet av Moy en Omenga ble de fryktede Waurani-krigerne også tvunget til å føre kampen for sine landområder ut av jungelen og inn i storbyen og industriens kontorer. Nosotros estamos esperando aquí decir territorio Waurani lo que encuentra aquí estamos pisado pero no, los últimos días no vamos a permitir no vamos a negociar ni vamos a hablar pero aquí estamos hasta hasta que termina el mundo ten, pensamos dentro del corazón. Til tross for Waurani-nes iherdige protester mot intrengerne fortsetter de å komme. Sommeren 1995 får Waurani-landsbyen Kauai Riono Ubet besök av kompaniets representanter. Sammen med oljefolkene kommer også vitenskapsmenn som samler medisinplanter. De ene må men ene må pon, da oris de ene må pon vende. Kåren i tres gangene er nei da. Og ja, vi må baron, baron en kjera arani. Da i ta arani. Kom en ene sismika kjen gipote. Aketa ene ponan en ene da. Muchos tipos de, no solo petróleo, pero hay miles de cosas de naturaleza aquí, pero tienen compañía. Ellos, como decir, muchos no conozco, no me acuerdo de la medicina, porque el idioma ahora sí, pero español no sé. Entonces ellos, cada, cada su trabajo, cada medicina, cada, cada fruta de Amazonia tiene compañía para contratar y hacer quedar todo, ¿no? y vender ellos más riqueza. Entonces eso yo un poco denuncio, porque... Eso a mí me duele, está sacando como decir pelo, gente o así, cosa que nuestra corazón de aquí. En I San Francisco i USA finner vi et legemiddelfirma som har oppsøkt Waurani-ene for å sanke medisinplanter. Shaman Pharmaceuticals har utviklet denne forretningsideen. Vi ser spesifikt på bare at plantene er brukt av traditionelle indigenous mennesker for diseases som vi jobber på. Ikke langt fra Waurani-enes territorium ligger landsbyen Chato Molino, Her bor en annen urbefolkningsgruppe, Kichua-indianerne, som er Inkanes etterkommere. De har også lange tradisjoner i å bruke plantemedisiner. Sommeren 1994 kom vitenskapsmenn fra Shaman Pharmaceuticals til Chato Molino for å sanke medisinplanter. De ble vist rundt av landsbyens medisinmann Elias Andi. Elias Andi er viden kjent for sine store kunnskaper om helberedende planter. Primillo, hatun, caspi, ichila, caspi, agua, caspi, toco y ruya, cae al higino, primillo, con la mancha, y se chira en el país. No hay sentimiento, pensamiento. Ve el pa local de medicina, men y Amazonas, has shaman pharmaceuticals, fundet fram til dette tre av Kroton slekten. Den rødfargede sevien kalles Drageblod, Sangre de Drago, og brukes av de lokale medicinmen til å hele sår, og kurere en rekke sykdommer. Shaman Pharmaceuticals har brukt moderne bioteknologi for å isolere det aktive molekylet i denne sevjen. Og fra dette virkestoffet har firmaet laget nye medisiner mot herpes og mot en lungesykdom hos barn. Disse legemidlene er nå under utprøving og godkjenning i USA. Fordi bedriften har tatt utgangspunkt i urbefolkningens kunnskaper, 
har den kommit fram till nya produkter raskare och billigare än det som är er vanlig i läkemedelsindustrien. Hopefully that's why the stockholders still believing in us. Sällskapet sökte patent på virkestoffet från drageblodet och fick det invilget. Yes, we did. Denna egendomsrätten kan visa sig att vara guldkantet. Markedets förväntningar till Shaman Pharmaceuticals är er svårt stora och sällskapets direktör tror att drageblodprodukterna kan betyda miljardintäkter i dollar. We would hope that. Yes, absolutely. We would hope that. Lo que estamos hablando acá es cómo compañías basadas en biotecnologías tratan de desarrollar productos para mercados que son que puedan uh, que tienen la capacidad de adquisición. No estamos hablando ni de los pueblos indios ni de los pobres, de los pueblos pobres o comunidades pobres del mundo. Estamos hablando solamente de un de una pequeña población básicamente en el norte que tiene acceso a este a, a, a acceso a una economía que pueda comprar estos productos. Shaman Pharmaceuticals har gjort ett nummer av att de inte är er som andra läkemedelsfirmar. I Hato Molino har de bidrat till att utbättra flystripen och de har också lagt in vatten till de flesta boendena. Arbetar för tillsammans 5000 dollar. Och de har lovat att komma tillbaka med mer hjälp. I landsbyen er likevel ikke alle tilfredse med selskapet. Aquí nos vinieron a ofrecernos muchas cosas, sacar plantas medicinales de esta comunidad, ya que esta comunidad, sabiendo que tenía esta comunidad, la escritura que nos corresponde al pueblo indio de Molino. Y aún así vinieron pues Shaman Farmacéutica, que es de, de otro país de Estados Unidos, lo que nos dieron es como 12 millones, 12 millones de sucres. Yo creo que no es al tanto de que han sacado de la planta medicinales. I actually feel that the relationship that we have cultivated with the community of Molino is one of the most um, wonderful relationships I've had a privilege to be involved with, with those people, those human beings whom I know as individuals. Um, therefore, I don't assign that monetary value to one particular place. We're currently uh, getting material from Peru. Um, we have acquired some material from Ecuador, some from Colombia, some from Mexico, uh, and very small research quantities from four other countries. And so right off there, what you've got is uh, uh, Shaman's ability to, to, to put one indigenous community at, at war with another indigenous community and to see which, where, from where they can get the best deal and, of course, to reach across international boundaries and say that we'll take it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Multinationale legemiddelfirma Pfizer arbeider også med å utvikle medisiner fra plantematerialet, både fra Nord- og Sør-Amerika. And we're also working with China, uh, where we are trying to trace back uh, the use of herbal medicine and uh, identify those um, mixtures and see if we can extract some component from that. We're also in negotiations with uh, Ecuador uh, to see if we can uh, gain access to some of the uh, tropical forest uh, products there. There's some that could be utviklet new legmidler. Till Pfizer sine samarbeidspartnere i Ecuador. 1 till 2 percent av förtjänsten. It seems to be a very good complement between uh, the developed world in trying to utilize products from the rainforest and uh, those countries where they're trying to maintain that. Uh, hopefully it will become an economically advantageous for both uh, societies. Obviamente 1% y 2% es bajo. 
Entonces, el primer punto y una de las primeras críticas que tenemos al proyecto como tal es que el porcentaje es relativamente muy bajo. Eh, debería ser, y nosotros tenemos quizás una propuesta en ese sentido, debería ser alrededor de un 15%. Men 15% andel av nettoförtjänsten är mer än den internationella farmaceutiska industrin kan acceptera. Efter våra intervjuer har Pfizer nu bestämt sig för att lägga projektet i Ecuador på is. Right now I, I don't believe that there's a single a single contract signed between a, a private group in the third world or a country with a pharmaceutical company that will ultimately mean that there'll be any benefits going back to the third world. Inte bara genmaterialet från planter i urskogen är av intresse för vetenskapsfolk och läkemedelsfirmar. I de industrialiserade länderna föregår nu en intens forskning på människornas arvanlägg. The revolution I think in the way in which we discover drugs by the human genome project has come about because by understanding the sequence of the different genes which make up the human genome we're able to very specifically identify those genes which are important in uh, producing disease and once we understand that uh, very clearly we can design drugs that will alter the activity of this changed or mutated uh, gene and its protein product. The Human Genome Project, Hugo, är det största forskningsprojektet i USA sedan Apollo 13. Men denna gången rätter vetenskapen sig inover mot livets bittesmå byggsteiner. Projektets mål är att kartlägga människans arvanlägg i sin helhet. The exciting part of, of this technology and what's happening now in DNA sequencing is that it has a finite lifespan. There will come a day in the future when, in which we have all of the genes in the body. They'll be cataloged, they'll be characterized to some extent. And now medicine, medical research, can really begin to, to study those genes in great detail. Ett av Hugos sideprojekter är kartläggningen av arvanlägg hos urbefolkningar och etniska grupper världen över. Utgångspunkten för detta projekt var önskan om att finna fram till våra felles rötter. But the most important point is that, uh, as you know, uh, we are one species, but we live under such a diverse circumstances that sometime in certain corner of our globe, there are populations which have been able to survive some stresses which would kill uh, our civilized part of society in no time. And the issue is, uh, how come? How did they manage to survive in such a no situation and to study their genetic makeup can give information about uh, the importance of uh, the human genome with respect to the susceptibility or to the resistance to one disease or another. For att finna disse genetiska skillnaderna som kan leda fram till nya läkemedel tappas det nå blod från världens urbefolkningar. Sequoia indianerna i Ecuador, en liten folkgrupp med bara 300 genlevande medlemmar är bland dem som har haft besök av blodsamlarna. La sangre ellos decían que querían mirar sobre sacaban al hermano y la hermana querían comprobar la sangre que son hermanos propios sabiendo que otros son otros que no son y decían eso y le dieron a veces le dieron dando, sacaban con un regalo, dando jabones, dando algo de comida. Así por eso le, la gente se anima y le dejó sacar la sangre y le dejaba. Oso den farmacéutiska industrin är optat av att få arkiverat disse folkegruppernas genmaterial i västliga genbanker för folkeslagen är utryddet. Yes, I think it's a, a critical thing that, um, that, that should be done. And I think that's a whole part of the diversity project is to do that. It's important, I think, to have that as a, a resource. Men den genforskningen kostar pengar. Därför har forskarna hänvänt sig till den farmaceutiska industrin för att få stötte till insamlingen av urbefolkningens gener. The point which is important is that they help us in collecting it. And I think that this uh, uh, is a, a beneficial uh, action that they do for their own purpose of wanting to make money and uh, and it is the only way to do it otherwise the money wouldn't be there there is never enough money for this type of study 
att läkemedelsindustrin ska kunna göra pengar på deras arvematerial och kanske också ta patent på det har fått urbefolkningsgrupper över hela världen till att reagera och så samman i Norge. Jag kan inte fatta och förstå vad som vad som skapar människor som i det hela tatt kan tänka så. Como pueblo se colla eh, defiendo por la dignidad humana de mi pueblo. Soy su presidente y y al mundo entero yo digo que no queremos seguir siendo como eh, zoológico de animales eh. porque siempre el espíritu de los chamanes viejos como dice los guaraní no cambia otra sangre, pero como sangre tiene que morir. These are the frozen samples so you can see. These are from all over the world. We have samples here from South Africa, from Australia, we have them from South America. Um, we keep frozen cells taken straight from a person, or we also take keep cell lines which are transformed and can be grown. So they're uh, immortal cell lines. It's a terribly sad state that we we can find the money, perhaps the tens or hundreds of millions of dollars necessary to mortalize their blood, but we don't mind losing the culture, uh, don't mind losing the, the creativity of the people. We'll just keep a little sample of their blood and, and immortalize forever for, for our purposes. I think that, that, that uh, society, humanity, has an obligation to protect human diversity and the cultural diversity. Los estimados son de que um, existen alrededor de entre 700 y 800 comunidades que están en peligro de desaparecer física o culturalmente. Solamente en este siglo, una cultura indígena ha desaparecido por año en Brasil, para poner como ejemplo. Entonces, el énfasis, de poner, uh, de, el énfasis en los genes de los indígenas deja de lado una cuestión que es mucho más fundamental, que es la, cómo se puede fortalecer la permanencia de estas comunidades con programas de salud, con programas de, 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 de mejoras de nivel de vida, con programas de educación que estén basados en el, en, en, en el, en, dentro de la, la concepción cultural o dentro de las culturas de los pueblos indios mismos, y en vez de tratar de inmortalizarlos en bancos genéticos. As we see this rapid decline in indigenous communities, in languages and cultures around the world, as that happens, we're losing knowledge. We're giving ourselves a sort of a environmental lobotomies. It's all going out of us. Thousands of years of human knowledge disappearing. Science has profoundly altered the conditions of man's life, both materially and in ways of the spirit as well. It's extended the range of questions which man has a choice. It has extended man's freedom to make significant decisions. If there is a poor man's atom bomb, biological weapons. One thimbleful of botulinum toxin is enough to kill all the people in New York City. More easy to produce, more easy to make, more easy possibly to use, yes. It's such a terrible threat, it's such a horrible concept that nobody wants to talk about it. Biological warfare works by causing disease. You need to inhale a few organisms, which then multiply in the body, cause disease, and that leads to illness or to death, depending on the nature of the biological agent. You're looking at variants of smallpox, of plague. Um, you're, you're looking at things that cause your, your, uh, your system to completely degenerate. 
uh, cause your body to be unable to breathe, cause huge sores all over your body. It, it depends on, on, uh, on the circumstances, but none of them are pleasant. Biologiske våpen er ingen ny oppfinnelse. Under annen verdenskrig satt japanerne i gang et stort forskningsprosjekt for å utvikle og dyrke fram dødelige eller sykdomsframkallende virus og bakterier. I Manchuria ble disse organismene helt i vannreservarer, elver og brønner, og over 10 000 kinesere døde under grusomme omstendigheter. Under annen verdenskrig satte også USA og Storbritannia i gang med utvikling av biologiske våpen. For å prøve ut virkningen, slapp britene ut sporer av den dødelige antraksbakterien på Grinardøya ved kysten av Skottland. Ikke før 45 år etter antraksangrepet kunne øya trygt tas i bruk igjen for mennesker. På Fort Detrick i Maryland bygget amerikanerne opp et laboratorium og en fabrikk for biologiske våpen. Her ble det produsert sykdomsframkallende mikroorganismer og millioner av mygg. Den gang mente man at infiserte insekter kunne være effektive for å overføre dødelige bakterier til fienden. Bruken av napalm og planteødeleggende stoffer under Vietnamkrigen brakte kjemiske og biologiske stridsmidler i økende miskredit, også i USA. I 1972 undertegnet USA, Storbritannia og Sovjetunionen en internasjonal konvensjon som forbyr utvikling, produksjon og lagring av biologiske våpen. I mange år trodde man at disse fryktelige våpnene hørte historien til. Inntil denne mannen, russeren Vladimir Pasetsnik, hoppet av til britene i 1989. Pasetsnik var den gang leder for Biopreparat, et kjempemessig medisinsk forskningsprogram med tusenvis ansatt over hele Sovjetunionen. Et program for å utvikle nye medisiner, trodde man i Vesten. Det som de gjorde, var å investere en enorm sum av penger i et veldig ekstensivt biologiske våpensprogram, det største som verden har sett. James Adams er kjent for sine gode kontakter i de hemmelige tjenester. Han var den første journalisten som fikk møte Pasetsnik som skjulte seg i England under beskyttelse av den britiske etterretningstjenesten MI6. Og han fortalte oss ikke bare at det hadde eksistet, som var i seg selv en revelasjon, men at de hadde produsert 14 unnående strenger av plage som den vest hadde ikke antidote for, at de hadde utviklet veldig effektive delivery-systemer, og at de hadde den største offensive BW-kapabiliteten noen gang. So finally I came to the conclusion that uh, one possible way uh, to um, stop the program will be bring the news about it to the western side. Pasetsniks avsløringer skapte sterke reaksjoner i Vesten, og Storbritannias og USAs ledere konfronterte først Gorbachev, senere Yeltsin, med krav om å stanse det biologiske våpenprogrammet. They were first of all met with denials. The program doesn't exist. Then Yeltsin finally last year said, yes, it does exist, but I have ordered it shut down. In fact, the military have ignored uh, the orders from Yeltsin, which Western intelligence believes that he has actually given. So we don't yet have sufficient transparency of what the former Soviet Union program was to be sure that it has stopped and that there's no residual capability No, it hasn't stopped. It's continuing uninterrupted, and uh, there, even been, there has even been development of new facilities in the last three years. Russerne forsøker nå å bygge inn nye giftproduserende gener i virus som i utgangspunkt er ufarlige, som influensa. På denne måten kan det utvikles nye og dødbringende biologiske våpen. They have... Um a broad array of biological weapons. They have genetically engineered new strains of uh, almost every weapon you can imagine. Russerne forsker også på antraksbakterien, en svært harfør og dødelig bakterie. Ved en eksplosjon i et militært laboratorium i Sverdlovsk i 1979 lekket ut antraks som drepte mer enn 100 mennesker. Antraks spres gjennom lufta, og sykdommen ligner mye på lungebetennelse. 
uh, having received the results, you realize that you are coming closer and closer to possible military application, military use of uh, biological preparations. And that uh, raised some feeling of horror. In the control shack was Dr. J.R. Oppenheimer, who, assisted by Dr. I. Rabi and others, had directed the making of the bomb itself. The automatic control's got it now. Rob, this time the stakes are really high. It's going to work all right, Robert, and I'm sure we'll never be sorry for it. But in 40 seconds, we'll know. Minus 30 seconds. Minus 10 seconds. Minus 5 seconds. Fysikeren Robert Oppenheimer, som ledet arbeidet med å utvikle USAs første atombomber, har drevet av ønsket om å avsløre atomkjernens hemmeligheter. I våre dager er levende cellekjerner utgangspunktet for forskernes nysgjerrighet. Men de nye kunnskapene fra genteknologien gir ikke bare økte muligheter til å redde liv. Og det viktige er igjen at mye av teknologi til å utvikle genetic engineering in certain peaceful directions can be very easily applied for military purposes as well. Every, si every uh, piece of knowledge that is gathered about DNA, every uh, piece of information that is gathered about the way genetics works plays into the knowledge and uh, the ability of people to manufacture more refined biological weapons. Genteknologien gjør det også mulig å forandre kroppens såkalte bioregulatorer som kontrollerer sinnstemningene våre. Man kan lage giftstoffer som trenger seg gjennom gassmaskenes filtre og slår ut offrene ved å sette dem i en tilstand av frykt, trøtthet eller depresjon. Biological weapons kan være så dangerous som små nuklear weapons, og særlig om genetisk engineering produserer nye kinder av superbugs, de kan være enda mer dangerous i fremtiden. Særlig i USA har man fryktet en slik utvikling. I dag bruker amerikanerne mer enn 10 milliarder kroner i året på forskning og utvikling av vaksiner mot biologiske våpen. Ikke bare russerne, men også Irak har store forskningsprogram for å utvikle nye biologiske våpen. De har vært på mange andre diseaser eksperimentelle. Toxin som er ricin, a rotavirus which causes severe diarrhea, um, a conjunctivitis uh, virus which causes very bad uh, inflammations of the eyes and temporary blindness. They are even working on diseases of crops like wheat to see whether they could actually damage the crops of neighboring countries such as Iran. Under forberedelsene til Golfkrigen ble soldater fra både USA og Storbritannia vaksinert mot antrax, og store troppestyrker ble også utstyrt med gassmasker og beskyttelsestrakter, i tilfelle Saddam Hussein angrep med biologiske eller kjemiske våpen. Etter at Irak ble nedkjempet, og Saddam Hussein tvunget til å undertegne en fredsavtale, forpliktet han seg til å kvitte seg med alle typer masseødeleggelsesvåpen. Men irakerne benektet at de hadde biologiske våpen, og FN-inspektørene fant ingenting heller. I was on two of the UN teams that went to Iraq to do the inspections. Uh, none of our teams were ever able to find any evidence uh, until uh, recently, and now we know that it's been there all along. The Iraqis have been working for quite a number of years, uh, at least 15 years, and certainly five years in a concentrated program to develop a whole range of biological weapons. By 1990, they had stored large quantities of anthrax, of botulinum toxin and another toxin called aflatoxin. During the crisis before the outbreak of the war in January 1991, they succeeded in weaponizing these systems so that by the outbreak of the war, they had some specially modified medium range missiles, 25 of them, which were equipped with either toxin or anthrax bombs warheads. They had over 160 bombs equipped either with anthrax or toxins ready for use. 
Saddam Hussein hade biologiska vapen placerat i skuddraketter som kunde nå både Israel och Saudiarabia. Och han hade ett arsenal av biologiska stridsmedel som kunde ha döpt miljoner av människor. You know, thousands of people uh, can be killed by one gram of bacteria, and then when you multiply that by you know, the number of kilograms uh, that's on hand, uh, you can easily figure out how devastating. That's why they're called weapons of mass destruction. Idag är er det mellan 30 och 40 land i världen som har teknologiska möjligheter till att framställa biologiska vapen, men inte alla har tagit dessa möjligheter i bruk. The sort of assessments that are made are that some 10 to 12 countries may have either biological weapons or programmed to produce biological weapons. I think there is a risk that as we get more of a north-south axis of confrontation, then some poorer countries may see the need for having weapons of mass destruction because they see states like the United States, Britain, France and Russia still maintaining their nuclear forces and being in positions of very considerable political power. And if they want counters to that power, then weapons of mass destruction, like biological weapons, can be useful. Uh, so to have uh, an offensive biological weapons program is certainly something that uh, third world nations can do uh, without the expense or without the, uh, the clear a signature that a nuclear program uh, entails. It's it's still quite hard to get nuclear materials of a weapons grade material. People do understand the science of making a bomb, a nuclear bomb and, and could do it if they but the materials are so hard to get. That's not the case with biological weapons. In fact, uh, given some of the equipment to make biological agents are is equipment that you can find in breweries in yogurt makers, in bakers, large baking enterprises, um, anything where you are growing the agent and, and the fermentation process that, that is associated with some of those activities are, are all technologies related to making biological weapons. Teknologien er allerede så enkel at ikke bare alle land snart vil ha tilgang til den, men også alle slags terroristgrupper, Slik vi så i Tokyo 20. mars 1995, da den religiøse sekten Aum Shinrikoyo angrep fem undergrundstog midt i rørstiden med den giftige nervegassen Sarin. 12 mennesker blev drept, og over 5000 blev skadet. Now this was a very unsophisticated attack. What is not generally known is that the terrorists also had botulinus toxin, which uh, is a million times more powerful than sarin and didn't it, it was planted but didn't go off. Aum sekten hade köpt utstyret sitt både i Europa, Japan och USA för att framställa biologiska stridsmedel. Då sekten blev avslört jobbet den med nya måter att sprida de dödbringande stoffen. Well you you adapt a truck, put put a container on a truck and a, a dispenser system and and sort of fans to disseminated as you drove through the streets of the city and, and he was saying this in a context where there was a former cult member there and he kind of got alert and said well we were working on those trucks uh, it's not a terribly sophisticated mechanism now this is magic in terrorism terms this does the business what more effective way of delivering a message of blackmailing of threatening uh, of causing or forcing political change than to use biological weapons. And there is no question, none at all, that that is what will occur in the, in the not too distant future. The, the cult in Japan also had um, helicopters that were equipped with their um, agricultural sprayers. The anomaly there was that they had no agricultural land holdings anywhere. So what was that equipment? What were those helicopters for? And these people, were not state-sponsored terrorists. They didn't get help from outside. They were just a bunch of bright guys, got together, got the equipment and made the material. USA's military leaders take the threat from the biological weapons very seriously. In the last summer, there was a bigger war to see how a situation can develop. 
one particular case was an assumption that a terrorist group, it was an unnamed group, but one assumed either Iraqi or North Korean, was able to get a quantity of anthrax spores distributed within the New York Stock Exchange through the ventilation system. Uh, the effect that this would have on the people working in the exchange would be they would be infected, rapidly fall ill, and many of them would die. And the effect of that would be to hugely disrupt the working of the American stock market, because all these people with the routine expertise to run the market would themselves be either seriously ill or dying. Med slike øvelser forbereder amerikanerne seg nå mot angrep fra terrorister utstyrt med biologiske våpen. Her i Norge er beredskapen en annen. Det vi kan uh, satse på er jo at norsk sikkerhetspoliti, altså overvåkningstjenesten, ville få et tips om denne personen fra samarbeid med tjeneste og, og arrestere vedkommende. If somebody is thinking of using biological weapons, they're going to spread it as an aerosol, which is a lot of fine particles. So the first line of defense is to try to detect the approach of such a dangerous cloud. But to protect an entire population would mean to equip them with these immensely expensive protective suits or actually get them in shelters with filtered air. And nobody is seriously trying to do that at present. Well, obviously, we're not in the business of supplying uh, protective gear to the entire population of the United States or anywhere else. And the primary focus of our program is to defend the military forces who are going to be deployed into an area where we have uh, sufficient intelligence uh, to warn us that there is a high likelihood of biological agents being used uh, against forces in that particular area of the world. Certainly in the Gulf, we were confronted with a situation where even if our own troops or the troops of the coalition were vaccinated against biological weapons use, what were you going to do with the civilian population, say, in Saudi Arabia, the, the civilians who were working at the ports, the civilians who were working at the airfields, the general population? Fordi det er vanskelig å beskytte sivilbefolkningen mot biologiske våpen, er tidlig varsling av eventuelle angrep desto viktigere. Men denne overvåkningsoppgaven er nesten umulig. Ja, den er i hvert fall meget vanskelig. Hvorvidt den er umulig, det, det, det får vel for så vidt tiden vise. Men, men jeg kan bare bekrefte at det er veldig vanskelig fordi at vi har en situation hvor det en er enkelt å fremstille og hvor det er to det er små mengder som behøves. Once you start to ask the question, what can we do, then the answer begins to come back, well, actually, not very much. And nobody wants to be put in the position of saying, this is terrible, but I can't do anything. I think if you have had significant numbers of casualties caused by biological weapons, and the world community is opposed to that particular action, then an appropriate response might be the use of nuclear weapons. I dag har NATO-alliansen forpliktet seg til ikke å være først ute med bruk av atomvåpen. Alliansen vil også avstå fra atomangrep mot land som selv ikke har slike våpen. Men den nye faren for biologisk krigføring kan føre til at NATO trekker tilbake disse forpliktelsene. Since the United States, for example, does not maintain a major offensive biological capability, it can and should rely on nuclear weapons to act as a deterrent or indeed to be used in extreme cases. There are indications now that the United States is embarking on a plan to modify one of its existing nuclear bombs and give it an earth penetrating capability. One of the main reasons for that would be to be able to make it destroy very deep underground command bunkers or biological or chemical plant again very deep underground. So this really is a new strand to nuclear strategy, which is coming to the fore quite fast and is being talked about widely in military circles. The use of nuclear weapons to respond to biological weapons of mass destruction. Under Golfkrigen var trusselen om biologisk krigføring så alvorlig at USA hadde atomvåpen i beredskap. Hadde Saddam Hussein sendt av gårde en av sine raketter med biologiske våpen, kunne vi ha vært inne i en atomkrig. And there was a presumption that that could have possibly happened in the Gulf War. Saddam Hussein was not clear to whether nuclear weapons might be used against him or conventional weapons. 
And I think that bit of uncertainty does actually help to deter. So it's harder to make a judgment as to whether to acquire or use biological weapons. The idea that the nuclear age is over is an absolute myth. It's in transition to a new phase, and in some ways a very unstable and dangerous phase. Konventionen om biologiska vapen är det eneste internationella mottiltak mot de sista års ökande fara för krig med slike vapen. Men konventionen är inte nog effektivt fredsredskap. Vi vet att i alla fall en av signaturmakterna, Ryssland, har brutit den i över 20 år. A number of people are concerned that the convention is not as useful as it should be because it does not have verification mechanisms associated with it. Akkurat i disse dager forhandler man om å innføre at skille kraftigere kontroll- og inspeksjonsrutiner i håp om at en strengere konvensjon kan vedtas i desember i år. And what is now desperately important is that the convention be hugely strengthened, made much more binding, with much greater verification procedures built into it. And that really has to happen in the next year, because the convention is being reviewed in about a year's time. If you don't do it, I think you run the risk that people will find biological weapons an attractive option. And I think that would be a very bad message for the world and something we would regret. The threat of BW is more serious today than the threat of nuclear war was in the 1950s. But we've got to face up to the problems. I mean, many people were very scared during the height of the Cold War. That translated into public demands for action, and that helped bring the nuclear arms race under some degree of control. We're into a different kind of era now in which there is a much more substantial risk of the small-scale use of biological and nuclear weapons. So instead of the risk of us falling over the cliff to utter catastrophe, we're on a slippery slope. That is sometimes more difficult to counter. So I think there is a, there is a greater likelihood of the use of biological and possibly nuclear weapons in the next 20 years than most people believe.